Hello, this is GML Industries here again, and in this write-up I will be showing you how to construct your very own TGSC, or Tommy Gun Snap Carbine. Before we begin, I would like to give full credit to Ace for the original design, for the original Snap Carbine, and to And the Hero Is for another good write-up with small variations of the initial design. In this build, however, I have kept in mind the balance between high rate of fire and satisfactory range, and most importantly, designed all aspects of this build so that literally every single part and tool, if necessary, can be purchased within a single trip to your local Home Depot. Okay, now for the parts list. For this build, you need around 11 inches of 1 and a quarter inch PVC, a couple feet of uh, half inch CPVC, a 1 inch PVC bushing, around 10 inches of 1 inch PVC, a 2 inch stub of 1 and a half inch PVC, a stack of medium sized compression springs as sold in the Home Depot. You will also need a clothespin, an L bracket, two, at least two uh, zip ties, a roofing nail, a one inch stub of half inch PVC, ten small screws, a longer screw or nail that's uh, between one and a half and two inches long. It can be cut down if you have a special soft or dremel for that, but you're going to need eye protection. Don't kill yourself. Um, a one, half inch PVC or CPVC coupler, excuse me for that, two one and a quarter inch washers and a matching bolt and three nuts, all for the same washer. Make sure that uh, the head of that washer is small enough so that it will be able to fit in the one half inch CPV zip uh, And you also need a one, one and one half inch rubber washer. It's not necessary, but around two and a half inches of three quarter inch dowel looks really nice for a priming bar, but you can use CPVC for this. And of course, whatever scrap wood you find lying around that is suitable for a stock and or handle. Okay, let's begin. If you haven't already, cut your one and a quarter inch CP er, PVC down to 11 inches. Okay. Now get your one inch bushing. Use your dremel or sandpaper to sand down the base of this lip and then shove it into one end of the body. Like this. For a good seal I used heavy duty marine epoxy. Although it works phenomenally, I have to say that it's probably not worth the forty dollars for a three inch tub. If I hadn't had it lying around from a previous non-nerf shenanigan, I probably would have that used epoxy putty instead. Once the bushing is in place, drill and countersink two holes for the screws that will hold and provide structural support for the bushing when firing. Fill these holes in with a little epoxy and then put in your screws. It's now time to begin the t putting together your bolt and plunger assembly. Gather the pieces shown in the picture. Get your 1 inch PVC and cut it down a little over 4.5 inches, like so. I ended up cutting a little shorter than ideal, any shorter than I would risk uh, structurally, structural integrity, excuse me, but after testing my bolt seems to be fine. This is, again, don't cut any shorter, but I would say probably a little longer than four and a half inches, but and any longer, too long, and you'll have trouble uh, cocking it back. You'll see that once I show the little clip at the end of this, or I will show pictures. Um, so, take your half inch CPVC coupler and drill a pilot hole in the bottom center, as shown in this picture. Now widen it with a bit large enough to allow the bolt to fit through. Slide the bolt through and then slip a first washer in and fasten down with two nuts. Put the second washer on and then fasten with the third down. This is what it should look like. Now wrap the bottom with E-tape until it fits snugly inside your 1 inch PVC. Hold the washer flush to the PVC and drill a and countersink a single screw. This is okay, don't freak out, it isn't a weight bearing part. You don't need more than one screw, you should be fine. If you want to use more than one screw, that's you can try, but if I ended up trying to do two and I had to ditch one of them because I would have trouble with the um, difference in size between the uh, one half inch PVC and the uh, larger one and a quarter inch PVC sliding easily with two screws but um, again if you want to use two you can go try make sure that you have to countersink them quite a lot though if you're going to use two now as far as you can go without coming out of the PVC measure a dot where your priming bar will go again take your three quarter inch dowel and mark a point around two and a half inches from the end and cut down so cut down like so drill and widen the dot you marked with your dowel so your dowel can fit through like this on the opposite side drill directly through the PVC where the dowel touches mark and drill a hole for the nail that will go through this dowel this will provide st stability for the priming rod here it is completed I wrapped a strip of gorilla tape to the end of the priming rod for added comfort but it's not necessary now get these pieces for your handle this is sort of an in-between step, and you can do it now or when the body is finished. So it's, and if you're complete OCD and have to do it in, in step order, this should be a step that doesn't make sense. I just forgot to put it in, so here we go. In any case, uh, 
Now mark the wood handle four inches from an end and then cut at an angle. All right. Now that that's done, it's time to it's time to make the trigger. Go gather up these parts. Cut down the clothespin like this. Drill a hole so that the clothespin and nail can come through. All right. Now take your nail and measure it and cut it down so you'll have about an eighth of an inch left jutting out from both the clothespin and the PVC. Put your bracket on and secure it like this. I did it with a zip tie. Now you're done with your trigger. Do you see these red letters? Yeah, I don't like them either. I used one of those sand spongy things in the picture to rub off the paint and it did it without much difficulty and it doesn't take off too much PVC so it's not going to be unround or anything. Now take the main body of the blaster and make a dot around four and a half inches from the front of the blaster. Drill this out. We will use it later. If you can imagine the hole we just drilled is the bottom of the blaster, then these markings will be on the right side. Now if you're a lefty and you're making this for a left-handed person or you're going to have dualies, which I would actually recommend if you have the time and resources, that'd be pretty freaking sweet. Uh, anyway, so the first of these dots will be around uh, half to a quarter inch behind the hole we drilled, but on the right side or left side. But right side if you're right-handed, which is what I would, which is what I made and what I would recommend and which is what is going to be in the review videos and which is I have made before. So that's what I would recommend, making it on the right side. Five inches behind that dot, mark another dot. So five inches, again on the right side of the blaster, behind the dot we just made. Then on the very top of the blaster, make two, mark two more dots. One directly above the last dot we've just made, and then one at the very, very back. Now connect the dots with a Sharpie marker like this. Before we do anything else, fasten the trigger with a zip tie like so. Ignore the other black holes and lines. Use, I use a drill press or a dremel, either is fine, to cut along the line we just marked and make the crevice, for lack of a better word, as slightly uh, wider than the priming bar. If you make it too thin or just the length of the priming bar, you're going to run into issues with friction and it will slow down the fire rate. Now take your one and a half inch PVC stub and cut it along the hot dog way, like this. Line it up, uh, line it up on the cut area to, and mark the section at the very bottom. This is where the handle will go. Screw and countersink two more holes in through the stub into the grip. Then drew the, and screw these holes into the grip. Now is a good time to file down the grip and make it more comfortable. Cut four and a half inches of one inch PVC and cut seven inches of CPVC as well as one inch of one half inch PVC. Sand down the PVC and ram the CPVC inside it with a hammer. Then wrap the outside with an even layer of V-tape so it fits snugly within the one inch PVC we just cut, like so. Make sure the CPVC is straight and then drill and fasten hole all the way through with your large screw. Now take the plunger rod you just made earlier and unscrew the top nut for your rubber washer. Now, um, for your rubber washer, if you, um, sometimes you'll run into trouble if it's too large or what, whichever size you get at Home Depot. Normally they have some sizes, sometimes they run a little large and sometimes a little small. If it's smaller, that's good, but you might run into trouble with it folding when it goes in the body. That's alright, when you take it back out, just take a pair of scissors or something and just cut very very carefully like a millimeter off um, around the circumference of the wash and that will get fine. Um, now when you're done, uh, put a lot of uh, silicone grease, I forgot to put that in the parts list, so make sure to do that. Um, put silicone grease in that and on the inside of where like the front plunger tube will be and that'll speed things up and then if you also um, along the sides, put silicone grease on, on the sides of uh, the crevice or whatever, I, again I, there's no official word for that, but um, the sides of the hole that we just drilled out the big gap, gouge, whatever you want to call it. So slide it in the gun like so. Um, again, if you have tr if you run into trouble pushing in and don't push too hard, you're probably just running into the screws either in the handle if you've put that in already or you're probably running into the trigger. Just pull it down and push through. Put the springs in like so. Alright, so now you're gonna um, put one spring in around the uh, CPVC that is in the this is tough to explain, but if you put one uh, spring in around the CPVC that should be in the piece we just made, and then another spring rest onto the uh, the wood of the priming rod, and then when you close it up, uh, hold it together, close it up, and then um, screw it together, uh, and then just put it together. And then it's hard to explain in the video, but if once you're building this, uh, you'll understand. You'll know what I'm doing. Um, you should know what to do. This is what it now looks like that now that you're finished. Now you're done. It's ready to shoot. If you want, you can get some wood and cut it out of stock and attach it again in a similar way you fashion the grip. Again, if you've gotten this far and you've made the grip and done everything else correctly, it should be a breeze making the stock. I apologize for not having pictures for this last step. Anyway, here's the money shot of the finished product. And again, here's what you have made just for here's what you have made if you have followed all the steps correctly. Alright, so if you're watching this clip right now, you probably just finished watching the uh, write-up or uh, whatever it's called, voiceover. 
um, for building your TGSC. I'm still working on that acronym. Oh boy. Um, so this uh, point of this little clip at the end is to show just how a uh, few more mechanisms that it would be harder to describe in pictures uh, would work out. So um, here is uh, one of the one of the ones I made. I think this is the one I actually did the write-up on. Um, first of all, the uh, as I've said in a previous video, if you've seen some of this stuff I have said in a previous review of this blaster before I uh, sold it. But um, so here the trigger normally is not depressed, and when you unlike other blasters, when you cock it back, it depresses, and then when you fire, it is down again. So I don't. That's uh, a little different than um, other blasters. Um, so just wanted to clarify that. Another thing, um, well, I've, obviously a lot of people, there are two great write-ups already. Uh, one I believe is by And the Hero Is. I will correct it probably right now if it's not. Um, I swear, I, I think that's who it is. I, this is the second time I'm saying it, so I, honestly, if it's not you, please don't take credit where it's not due, but I believe that is um, that was him. And another one was uh, Ace, or you may know him as... Uh, well, I don't remember his YouTube username. I'm drawing a blank here, but he uh, he goes by Ace on uh, Nerf Revolution or Nerf Haven. Um, so, uh, yep, that wasn't uh, by him. But I decided to tweak the design a little bit. Um, and this one, you'll notice, it does not have the full stock. Um, if you were to order these one from commission or sales thread or what whatnot, it will come with a uh, stock. And I actually do have the stocks for this one and the other few. I'll be showing in this video. But um, just for video purposes, it's a little bit more cumbersome with the stock just to be doing close with the camera and whatnot. And I also wanted to give you a proportion of the body. And when it does ship, if you're to purchase one, it will come um, with the blaster and the stock um, detached. So you'll have to screw that in. But it will come with the screws. And it's uh, pretty easy. I don't think any, anyone would have trouble with that. But um, anyway, so uh, on the inside, more, the main reason why you would be using a blaster like this rather than a, um, a full... Uh, snap carbine or snap or whatever is its maneuverability, but also um, this is a good project again for like beginning nerfers or if, if somebody <coughs> would want a uh, <coughs> commission or a <coughs> buy a <coughs> blaster for <coughs> someone like me. Sorry for that cheesy, uh, cheesy, uh, selfish, whatever, whatever you want to call it, uh, sales ploy. But I, uh, I do need a little bit of money. If you had would be interested in doing commissions, I love building these. It's a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, so it's uh, one of the more important parts of building this would. Uh, be the aspect of keeping uh, the costs of uh, building it down. So uh, everything, literally every part on this, you can see every part adhesive and tool that you use to build one of these. You can be purchased at, from one trip to the Home Depot. Um, especially the springs, everything was designed to run that. This whole back piece and um, the inside. If you can see right there, both springs wrap around that inner CPVC. I didn't really explain that much in the uh, the write up, but when you cock it back, that actually guides the springs and makes so they don't. Um, again, so they don't uh, like bounce off each other or whatnot. So uh, that guides them. If you were to uh, notice, sometimes this will occasionally get caught, and one will, when it's firing, get pushed up and off to the side. You can just uh, easily do that with your fingers, or less painfully, get a pair of tweezers, uh, pliers, or something, and just pull it back, put it back in. It'll take 30 seconds. And it'll be just back to normal. But um, that's probably one of the only downsides to this. Again, the um, great thing about this though is I am. Uh, currently doing a contract for this guy on a Nerf Revolution. Uh, he is, the bus will be on hold. It's another one of these. I'm not actually finished with it yet, but um, he can, it's almost identical to this, except it uses a K26 spring, um, most of a K26 spring, that is, so it'll be a little bit different than um, this, but another great part of this is you can switch, uh, since these springs from Home Depot are the identical size to a uh, Night Finder spring, are pretty close, you can swap one or two of them or whichever out for night finder springs or a cut down K26 so this is really you can adjust the power for whatever your needs are on this uh, type of blaster quite easily and I really um, that's another cool part of the design so uh, I will show you again just uh, the shooting and again the seal on these is great so here's cock it a little hard to cock with the stock and so there's the it cocked and it will fire and you can see that seal that's very good uh, one more thing uh, sometimes when you're finished with the build I claim 60 to 70 feet, uh, 70 upper 70s, on a good shot with uh, good darts and good seal fit and whatnot. Um, and uh, right when you're finished with this, you might actually not be getting that. And that's because the dowel rod um, you use for the priming bar it gets a lot of friction right here. Um, the more I've noticed on this one and my older one before it uh, was sold, 
Uh, the more times you shoot it, this will actually get thinner and worn down on the inside. That's fine. That won't break. It just means that there's going to be less friction. The more you play with it or the more you fire it, the uh, further it will go. So that's that's a good thing for us. And uh, two more things before we go. Uh, uh, one for scale. Uh, if you're wondering how big this is without the stock, this is the... Um, it's a different blaster. This is the uh, Nerf uh, ammo box or whatever, and this can just barely not fit in it. I bet you could, if you design, make one of these yourself. You could probably finagle a way to make this fit in here and have a surprise attack on somebody. I don't know how I'd be able to do that. But I think with a little bit of jamming, you can get that in there. But here's that one, how it fits in the ammo box. It looks kind of cool holding them in like this. And uh, the tack vest. A problem with this, even though it is pistol size without the stock, you do run into problems getting it actually in the pocket, the chest pocket, because of the uh, the way the trigger and the cocking bar are designed. But these do look pretty sexy dual wielding them. Although you would again run into some problems cocking them, but uh, again. But uh, I think on that note, I will uh, wrap up this video. And uh, please thank you for watching. And if you like this video and want to see more. Uh, these write-ups or reviews or whatnot. I have been working on this. I've been working on this review for quite some time. I know you guys, some of you subscribers, gotten a little, a uh, little frustrated with me for not updating a new video in a while. But uh, I have been busy. I was on vacation for the last uh, couple weeks, and I have been working on this with uh, friends and building these blasters and redesigning them and whatnot, and working on this write-up for now like a week and a half. So please.